paranoid individuals with their crackpot theories and funny shenanigans may this game always have an abundance of them. The place we are looking at today definitely does. It's a small little cabin located behind a very large electrical tower. Probably ruined the property value of this place, though I don't imagine it was very high before. It's called Gorski Cabin and it's far near the Drumlin Diner. It's in the low leveled area of the map. Out the front of this place we can find several ghouls, all of which are hostile and sort of just lying around, like ghouls are typical to do. Time for a gander. There is a large group of them here, and it's strange that they can all be found at this cabin. Usually in remote areas, ghouls don't tend to travel far. This would suggest that they were at this cabin when they turned, or possibly the former residents of it. Although that seems unlikely with what we learn later. Either way, taking care of them should be easy, even for low level players. The porch of the cabin has some drink on it, and the ghouls are unlikely to have partaken. Due to this, it must be fairly old, which means, bar the ghouls, no one else is likely to have been here in quite some time. Now for some reason, this ghoul did a runner on me. Thought I would be polite and wait for it to come scurrying back. It's odd that some enemies do that. I thought it could be my level, but I'm still fairly weak at this point. They do come back however, and we do kill them. Going around the back of the cabin, we can see that it's held up by cinder blocks, just like another cabin that we looked at several months ago. An old rusted and run down car can be found here as well, though whether this group of ghouls once owned it or the other individual we see here, I do not know. An intake vent of some sort or possibly air filtration system can be found beside it. To the watchful eye of those of you paying attention, you'll have noticed this when you first arrived. It could be nothing, but given what we soon find, it's definitely related to what else we find here. Now for the inside. One ghoul can be found here, sleeping on a mattress. I, I find that a little odd. Usually a hole in the ground is satisfactory for this lot. Hmm. Now we can't find more drinking here as well, and once again, it must be quite old, as there's no way this lot were having it. A hot plate is beside it, and the whole room has a bit of a survivalist feel to it. A camp station can also be found here, likely pre-war. It makes sense too, due to the, uh, capable nature of the individual who also lives here. Also, in regards to Jet and the last video, yes, I know it's meant to be post-war. Bethesda seems to have changed it, so I'm operating under the assumption that that is the case. Now, into the root cellar. So here we are. Another underground secret bunker. It's almost as if people were worried about a nuclear war. Huh, <laughs> ridiculous of course. Quite a lot of equipment can be found on here, though it's clear it's very old. It also seems like there was once much more of it, but a lot has been used now. The toaster in the bathtub is a little unnerving and morbid, if I'm being honest. Maybe a considered suicide attempt that they never went through with. Maybe just some dark humour from the developers. All of this points to someone who was prepared for a nuclear war. We can then set off down this dugout passageway. It has a ventilation system, reminding us once again of the vents we've seen up top. It looks like somewhat of an attempt was made to sort out the earth covering the ground here. Though, throwing down wooden boards is a pretty lazy attempt if I'm being honest. At the end, we come across a toilet, and the area is labelled restroom. Seems this was where the deed was done. It has a plunger, and this is one of the few locations where they are acceptable. But still, watch yourself. We can also find what looks like a hydrant of sorts. No idea why you would want this here though. Now, to open the door. So this poor chap is Wayne Gorski, and it's clear that he owned the cabin. They are now a ghoul, unfortunately for them. Now I doubt they had any relation to the ones above, so they were down here all by themselves. So you're probably thinking, how on earth did they become a ghoul? There's no radiation in here, oh, no, no, no wait my mistake, the place is swimming in radioactivity. The barrels are probably not really helping to be honest. Also, this poster here, a famous political cartoon, likely personifies their beliefs and you'll see why in a minute. I also think this room is where the vent from outside led to. Depending on what side the ladder was on, we may in fact be right underneath it right now. On this workstation, we can find many things. All of them are components of a mini-nuke. All components that we can utilize too, if we want to. 
It may be that parts of this required radioactive waste of a sort to get it to work. This explains why they had the barrels down here, despite likely knowing what effects such exposure would have on them. W well, they didn't know it would make them a ghoul, but you know what I mean. Per sod. Now, let's take a look at his terminal to see exactly what he was up to. Beside it, we can find a page out of the Wasteland Survival Guide. Now, okay, this is weird. I know why, from a game design point of view, this is here, to reward the player. However, from what we have seen, we interned Feral long ago, or at least pretty long ago. Not only should this not be down here, the Wasteland Survival Guide is still relatively new. So, yeah, a bit odd. The only entry is Statement of Intent. I get a major free man on the land vibe from this terminal. Essentially, this entry is meant to identify him as of sound mind when he took the actions he did. The actions being blowing up the electrical tower outside his cabin with a with a homemade mini nuke. Hmm. Which explains all the parts we've seen. It also appears that he turned before he ever got the chance to do so, as the mini nuke is not assembled, and the tower still stands. He thought that it was a mind controlled tower, not an electrical one. Hmm. And it was his duty to destroy it. It seems like he was maybe a bit ill. So this was Gorsky Cabin, home to Wayne Gorsky. The other ghouls here were likely people who fled atomic fire, only to eventually succumb to the resulting radiation, becoming ghouls. They may have tried to get into his cellar, or maybe they were already too far gone. We may never know. The actual house is pretty standard for a cabin, excepting the vent out the back, which, as we discussed, was likely used to bring in Ur to the cellar, could also play into why he turned into a ghoul. Wayne himself is found at the end of the cellar, in an incredibly irradiated room. This is due to the barrels of radioactive material present. Also, possibly due to the components of the mini nuke, he planned to use it to blow up the electrical tower out the front of his house. Not because it was ugly, or because it was ruining his view. Because he believed it to be a mind control tower. Yeah. So he thought himself a patriot, and was going to destroy it. It, it probably wasn't a mind control tower. The Join or Die poster was a political poster created by Benjamin Franklin before the Civil War. It was meant to represent the colonies of America joining together to fight the British Empire and throw them out of the country. This is in the same vein as Wayne's beliefs, as he considered himself a true patriot. And this poster could be argued to be one of the oldest messages of American patriotism. The bombs fell, and Wayne turned furl, and while his head was not in the right place, I think his heart was. This is once again another short lore video. I wasn't sure how these would be received when I started out, but you all seem to be enjoying them, which is great. As always, any support you can show really helps the channel, and discussions and feedback help me with new video ideas. Thank you. An old cabin, and the strange man who once lived there. I hope you like this look at all of it. If you did like it, give the video a like. And if you want regular updates, subscribe. Any suggestions for lore or future videos should be left in the comments below. Better yet, go onto my subreddit so we can discuss them in more detail. It's linked in the description. If you wish to, you can support me on Patreon. A pound or a dollar? I ask for no more. Any rewards you would like to see there that I don't have, message me. And I will take a look. Follow me on Twitter or Facebook to get regular updates or have a wee chat. Any business you wish to discuss, email me at enthapple.business at gmail.com and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I hope you enjoyed the episode and I hope to see you in the next one. And until then, goodbye.